So you're saying I can I can check out up to 200 different things, movies, uh, see compact discs. People don't know what those are anymore. Uh, yeah. b- books, silver musicy things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Up to 200 things at a time. A- at a time, and and we were really bummed when that happened. I mean, we we used to let people check out just as much as they could. <laughs> Be responsible for, and you know, we had people who'd be che- who would check out a thousand items or fifteen hundred items. Hi, everybody! Welcome back to another episode of Unscripted. I'm your host Brian Swanson, and joining me today is Steve Potter. And Steve has a role at the Mid Continent Library System. Steve, why don't you let us know what that is? I mean, I, I do have to confess that I think my most um, interesting and important role lately has been being a digital greeter here at Woods Chapel. I love doing <laughs> that, and so if I've been talking to you online. Hi, this is what I look like in in two dimensions as opposed to just characters. But at the library, um, for about 30 years, I've worked at Mid-Continent Public Library continuously. Actually, I've worked there about 35 years total. But um, right now, I'm the library director and CEO, which basically means I'm the sort of provide the executive direction and I interact with the uh, library board. And I also... um, um, do community outreach and things like that. Awesome. Yeah, Yeah, that's a lot. It it can be. Uh, Mid-Continent Public Library, is it's one of the largest political subdivisions in the state. It's in three different counties. It's about um, it's about 1,400 square miles, so that means it's larger than Rhode Island, and in terms of population, it's larger than four different states. Oh my gosh! So yeah, that I love that Rhode Island fact. Yeah, wait. That's uh... if we were just a <laughs> tiny bit bigger, we would be bigger than Delaware too. Oh my gosh! So. Well, maybe you know another branch. Yeah. We'll add take over North feet. Kansas City, Missouri. Then. There you go. It would be larger than yeah. Delaware. That's awesome. Yeah. So there's always a lot of things going on at the library, but yeah. you know, in the past year plus, we got out of the habit of doing a lot of things, mm-hmm. you know, pre-pandemic that we were just used to. So, right. what are some of the exciting things right now that uh, is happening with Mid Continent Library? You know, really, the most important or most exciting thing is is that we've been coming back. Mm-hmm. So. The way that I described this most recently to people is that if you did it in 2019, you can probably do it at Mid-Continent Public Library today, uh, with a couple of exceptions. We're still not doing um, in-person programming uh, because it's taking us a while to get all of our contracts in order and getting everything all lined up. And our story time, we haven't started back story time yet, but we're planning on starting back story time when the schools start back up. So yeah, so yeah I mean, pretty much everything that that you've done in the past, you can do now. But the the other real interesting thing that's happened is that the pandemic created such disruption in everyone's lives, including the way people interact with their libraries. And so it provided some great new services that we can try. So um, all of our libraries, if they don't have a drive-up window, which many of our libraries have drive-up windows, as you might know, um, if they don't have a drive-up window, we instituted curbside service. So you can just you know, call ahead and we run the items out to you, which can be really handy on a super hot day or a rainy day or just a day where you've got a bunch of kids in the car and you don't necessarily want to leave them in the car when you're yeah. going inside. It's not, not a good plan. Right. Um, and so we have the curbside pickup. And of course, that's going to be going on forever. I mean, people really, really like that. Uh, we boosted our Wi-Fi signals. So basically, we have 5G internet in all of our parking lots um, 24 hours a day. Um, uh, on a day when it's 90 degrees outside, that doesn't sound so comfortable, but on many other days, it's great. And I mean, I'll drive by the libraries at 11 o'clock at night. You'll see a couple of cars out there and it's people that are using our high speed internet because that's when they can access. Um, we also started loaning, um, uh, my fis uh, personal um, Wi-Fi devices. So if you don't have access to the internet at home, or maybe you've you know you've run on hard times and you've had to make a decision: do I pay my grocery bill or do I pay my internet? And you decided to eat that month instead. Yeah. Um, the library can help you out. We can actually check out a, a personal internet device for you for a couple of weeks, wow. and it can help your kids stay um, connected at school. It can help you find jobs. Things like that, and so and and we played around with a lot of other uh, services. We've got yeah. a lot of trial services that we did. Um, you, people kind of forgot about this, but we had all the mail-in voting during the election, mm-hmm. and so one of the things the library did is we started doing notary service, and that's something that's probably going to carry on. Um, so help people vote, but that became a service that will 
maintained. So, yeah, that's yeah. phenomenal. So many things. Um, yeah. That MiFi is that what it's called? The MiFi? Yeah, I think we call that, it mid. Uh, I think we call it MCPO Internet to Go or something. I mean, yeah. You know, the marketing people have to sure. have a tag. Sure. For everything. But to me, that's a game changer for families yeah. to be. And I've never. Now you can borrow the internet from right. the library. Right. That's awesome. So right. um, the thing we're going to be doing next is bundling Chromebooks with them. So again, same sort of thing. Wow. So if you. Um, you know, for whatever reason, your internet's not working, your computer's not working, but you need to apply for jobs or you need to make sure that your kids are staying caught up in school, that, you know, we can help. That's phenomenal. Well, one of the things I was going to ask you is how does how does the library improve our lives um, mm -hmm. and what do you wish people knew? Uh, to me, that um, helping kids stay connected in school and not get behind or uh, applying for jobs, that's that's phenomenal. Um, what else would you lump into that? The one thing that I like to try to explain to people is that what a library really does. So when people think about what does a library do, you immediately think, let's uh, you know, go somewhere and check out books. You think about yeah. borrowing books. That's what a library does. But I, I really don't feel like that's what we do. What I, what I feel like we do is everybody, you, me, everyone, has a hurdle that's placed before them. And whatever it might be. And what a library does is it helps you over that hurdle. Hmm. And sometimes that hurdle can be really superficial. So for example, my wife recently retired. She decided she wanted to take up crock pot cooking and the library became the place that she went to find all the cookbooks because she didn't know. And yeah. so that became the hurdle that she, you know, her hurdle was how to cook. Yeah. And we helped her find those books. Um, but for some folks, it's, um, I don't know how to read. And so we can help people with reading. One, another great program we have, we have a program that's called Career Online High School. And uh, average uh, participant in this is 29 years old, so they're adults. And these are folks who don't have a high school diploma. And, um, you know, just life got in the way for whatever reason. And they get to be about 25, 26, 27 years old, realize they don't have a lot of opportunity. And part of it is because they don't have the credentials. So they can come to us. We get them an accredited high school diploma, so it's not an equivalency, it's an actual high school diploma with career training, and just give it to them. Yes. <laughs> we, wow. we, just, we just help them over that hurdle. So it can be something as superficial as how do I fill my time, what fun movies to watch, yeah. to a real game changer. Yes, a life-changing yeah. step that right. someone could take. So, yeah. so I guess that's what I would ask people is be bold when you go and visit the library. Just, you know, ask us to help you with your hurdle, whatever it might be. Because yeah. it might just be, you know, I've, I've read all the Gillian Flynn and I want to be scared some more. Please tell me something else to yes. read that's similar. Or it may be something like I want to start a new business. And right. we've helped a lot of people start new businesses and, and coach them with that. So whatever that hurdle is that you need to get over, we're there to help. Check out your local library branch. Yeah. That's right. Um, well, thank you so much for joining us. If you want to know more, we're going to put the link to the library uh, website right in our description so you can go there. And uh, if you don't have a library card, man, what are you doing? Get, get, off, get off the couch and, and do that. Get to the library. See how sure. it can change your life. Right. Yeah, so thank you so much for joining us, Steve. No, thanks Appreciate for the it. opportunity. Yes. All Good right. to see everyone. Thanks for joining us for this week's Unscripted, and uh, check out your local Mid-Continent.